who's this just coming in? Yeah, I think we're good, Darren. Um, the voice is uh, all there. Perfect. Yes, he's in. Okay, awesome. Um, guys, just to, just to begin with, um, thank you very much for joining. Um, sorry for the small delay um, in classic coach chaos. Um, there's always things that kind of go wrong. And just as I was moving from outside in the sun to my desk, I dropped my hard drive and everything crashed. So um, there's been some last minute adjustments to today's presentation, um, but only um, minor ones. So um, the, the bulk of everything that we're gonna be doing is still there. Um, and um, hopefully it will be a, an exciting one and something that you can all take something from. So um, I think Mark wanted to just um, introduce um, what's going on and then um, we'll get ready to start. Uh, Darren, you're good. Done that already and just had a bit of a synopsis while you uh, uh, good. To, uh, keep her on, hopefully engaged for a couple of minutes. So uh, you're good to go uh, whenever you are ready. Good man. Um, can you see my full screen or can you just see the... Um, can you see Keynote being built? Uh, just the full screen, the front Perfect. screen. Perfect, okay. Awesome, um, so guys, today um, the, the session is all about technical development and um, Mark's asked me to come in and just talk a little bit about this. Um, he said already in the, in the briefing uh, to you guys that you've already had some small-sided games workshops um, that are looking at kind of, okay, how do we start to um, get players a little bit more tactically aware? How can we develop players within a small-sided games environment where there's constant decision-making and all that other kind of stuff? Um, if I'm honest, a small-sided games um, concept um, fits really well within my own philosophy. But of course, um, my own philosophy is a little bit different and uh, hopefully that's what you'll get from today. Um, who am I? I um, my name is Darren Cheeseman. I played hockey for England and Great Britain, um, uh, all the way from under 16s all the way through to seniors. Um, I played for some pretty big clubs in England, so East Grinstead, uh, Reading. Um, I played for Klein Switzerland in the Dutch league and also Oranje Zwart when they were still Oranje Zwart before they became Oranje Rood. Um, and now I'm the technical consultant for the Belgian Hockey Federation. Um, so um, my job is basically to look at what we can do with the players um, from the under 15s all the way through to the under 21s so that the men can win a gold in uh, Paris and the women can win a gold in Paris. Sorry. Awesome, thanks guys. Um, yeah, and so the women can win a gold in LA. So we're really looking at, okay, what technically do we have to put in the programs uh, to really support these players and um, what does that look like and how can we start to upskill some of the coaches so that there's integration between what I'm doing with the players and also what the team are expecting of the players in their general principles and um, tactics. So um, just that's a brief introduction to who I am and um, yeah, a little bit about my experience. Um, the, what we're going to do now is I just want you guys to have a quick think about what these players are about to do. So if you can open up your chat function, um, and all I want you to do is just throw in the chat function what you think these players are about to do. Oh. Why is this not playing? Okay, let's just go with some... Uh... I'm not sure. Give me two seconds, guys. I'm just going to stop sharing and uh, find out why this is not playing. Sorry, guys. Okay, um, so when I drop my hard drive, guys, the videos are not playing, sorry. So um, let me go back to sharing and I will adapt. Mark, maybe I can send you, actually they're all on my hard drive, that's not gonna help either. Uh, okay, we'll just go back to, what we'll do is I will go over to living room and we will, uh, we will improvise. So. 
if I stop sharing. Okay, guys, can you see me? Perfect. What I want you to do is just tell me what you think I'm about to do. So what am I about to do? Put it in your chat so that I can see. What am I about to do? Actually, you can call it out so I can hear. What, what am I about to do? Turn on your microphones. Push, what am I about to do? Get the ball. Get the ball. What am I about to do? Tomahawk. Exactly. Tomahawk, what am I about to do? Aerial. Perfect. So, so all of these things, just by looking at my body shape, you know exactly what I'm about to do. That's really important. Um, the next thing is, what am I about to do? So what am I about to do? Dribble. Drag. Drag. Perfect. But from there, I can actually hit the ball over there. Now, I don't know if you saw that um, really clearly. Let me just bring the video down a little bit more so you can see. From this position here, I can also hit over in that direction. Now, that's interesting to me because... That's interesting to me because... Um, let me just pull up the keynote. Okay, that's interesting to me because um, what we're really looking at is what are the essentials in the game um, that really allow us to be a little bit more um, creative in what we're doing with our technical skills. So already just in the basic things, Everyone was able to identify, okay, I'm about to make a push, I'm about to make a slap, I'm about to throw an overhead, just by the shape of my body. But um, my ability to play that hit from here to here is only because I understand the true, true essentials of the game. So what I'm going to ask you guys is um, start putting in the chat function um, what you think are the essentials of a 3D skill. For you to get the ball up in the air, what are the true essentials that allow that to happen? Okay, I'm gonna be monitoring the chat now. If you guys can start sharing. Use of your legs, okay, awesome. What else? Transfer of weight, grip, hand-eye coordination, balance. Some really good points here, keep going. What else are the real essentials to allow me to get the ball in the air? Good balance, ability to change direction. Really cool, thanks Andy. Footwork, open stick face, that's really interesting. Have muscles, <laughs> yeah. For sure, that's interesting. Low to high. Re Rebecca, can you turn on your mic and just talk to me about what low to high means? Keep going, guys. Uh, yeah, so obviously getting under the ball and moving your stick through the ball so that it raises. So even if it's just a small lift, that will put height on the ball. Okay, awesome. So um, what I'm going to do, let me turn off the share again. What I want to do now is just um, show you guys what I believe are the true essentials of us getting the ball in the air. So this is how I teach my daughter, Aisha. Um, it's how I teach all of our players. Um, if the ball is there, I, if you notice, I haven't got a stick in my hand. For me to get the ball in the air, I take my right hand and I get my hand under the ball to pick it up. That's it. I get my right hand under the ball to pick it up. Why is that interesting? Because the, my right hand starts to dictate what happens to the face of the stick. Now, if the face of my stick is manipulated by my right hand, essentially what I need is the face of my stick under the ball. So Chris said it already, I want the face of my stick under the ball. But in order to do that, if my left hand is high, 
Um, will I be able to get my right hand under the ball? Question to you guys. I'm looking in the chat. Make sure you keep typing, guys. If my left hand is high, can I get my right hand under the ball? No, 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 no. Awesome. So what do I need to do in order to get my right hand under the ball? Start sharing, guys. Exactly. I need to start dropping my left hand. So for me, there are two things that dictate uh, my ability to pick that ball up. I need my left hand down and it's my right hand that picks it up. That's it. That's the only thing I teach my daughter Aisha and it's the only thing I teach all of our players. Left hand down, right hand picks it up. Left hand down, right hand picks it up. Left hand down, right hand picks it up. And I think from that simple, um, that simple fundamental um, bit of explanation means that it's really easy for the players to start thinking about the principles that go into um, the ability to get the ball in the air. Now, if we're using that, if we're using that, um, well, going a little bit deeper, yes, there are other things that you've mentioned that help um, that, um, the delivery of a certain 3D skill. They help the ability to do that on the run. But we're just talking about the absolute essentials of getting the ball in the air. Now, if we use exactly the same for maybe a push pass, what do you guys think now, knowing what you know about me and 3D skills, what do you think are the absolute essentials of a push pass? And again, it's okay to type it in the chat box, but it's also okay to open up your microphone. Um, I, really wanna, I really wanna make this a little bit interactive, guys. Transfer of weight, follow through, strength in the right hand. These are all really cool points. Awesome. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, some really cool points. Keep going, guys. Stick contact directly behind the ball. Perfect. Step into the pass, stick on ball. For me, stick on ball is one of the big ones. Um, if you don't have your stick on the ball, it's not a push pass. So that's something to just bear in mind. So again, just to talk you through, just to talk you through again, how I coach Aisha and exactly how I coach um, the Belgian juniors and every other kid I coach. Let me bring this down a little bit. I have the ball here, again, taking away the stick. For me, the essentials of a push pass is that it's my right hand that makes that pass. So if it's my right hand that makes that pass, using exactly the same as what we just spoke about with 3D skills, the face of my stick, the face of my stick is the one that makes that push pass. So, first thing, we need our stick on the ball. In order, in order for it to be a push pass. We need our left hand to be just in front of the ball. Why does my left hand need to be in front of the ball? What does that allow me to do? Open up your mics, guys. Let's start talking. If my left hand's in front of the ball, what does that allow me to do? First, transfer the weight from the back to the front. So if it's behind the ball, you won't get the same um, lever on the, on the stick. Excellent. So for sure, if my left hand is further back, I won't get the same lever. So we need the ability for our stick to kind of go through. What if my stick is, what if my left hand is behind the ball and I try to push that ball? What will happen to it? It's going to go up in the air. It's going to go up in the air. So my left hand being in front of the ball is huge for me to be able to keep that ball on the floor once I follow through. If we talk about direction, what is it that makes the direction and the accuracy of my pass where I want it to be? What is it about what I'm doing with my hands that mean that the direction of the pass is exactly where I want it to be? The follow through. 
the follow through. And for me, this is, this is one of the essentials of the push pass. For the accuracy, what we talk about is pass and pose. So really starting at the basics, if I make that pass, can I then pose by pointing at exactly where I want that ball to go? And then the players start to understand the relationship between where their stick finishes and the direction of the ball. So for me, these are just some of the absolute basics and the fundamentals of the game that allow us to understand what is actually needed in the technical skills um, that we're gonna be coaching. So what I wanna do now, hopefully it will work. What I wanna do now is bring up this. So we have, and let me just double check this is working. None of these are working, excellent. We have so I'm just uh, finding the share button. We have three phases that I like to go through in technical in technical development. So the first one is we look at the skill in isolation. So um, this is all about the movement. It's all about um, the technique. It's but it's really in isolation. So for me, this can be an unopposed training. It can be an opposed training. Um, it could be a whole range of things. But it's all about the player really understanding the movement and the way that they manipulate the ball so that they can do that technique or skill. Once we've gone through isolation, we then go into integration. So integration is where we start to put that into, um, into um, their, their training. We start to put it into their games where it's part of a bigger picture thing and they have to actually start making some decisions around it. Um, they actually have to start um, avoiding players or using that skill in context. That's what the whole integration piece is. So you might see that in small-sided games. And then the last part is improvisation. Now for me, my goal as a coach is can I get my players to the point where they are improvising on the techniques and the, the ability to manipulate the ball that we taught them in isolation phase. So the idea is that it won't always look um, exactly the same as what we taught them, but because they have those movements and they're really comfortable with it, they instinctively just pull them out when they find the need to do it. Um, and this is where you start, we start looking at players and saying, oh my God, I can't believe that they've just done this skill. Oh my God, where did they get the ability to do that? There's no way you can coach that. I genuinely believe you can't coach that um, because we don't have enough hours on the pitch to practice that. And um, it is really instinctive. But I also genuinely believe that all of the magic that you see these players do all of it is based on things that they've learned in isolation and they've put into their game um, in, in the integration phase. Now, no, not many coaches will be thinking about this model in terms of isolation, integration, improvisation. But um, if you look at your practice and if you look at most other practices that are out there, they all have this within it. This is just a simple model to help it um, become a little bit clearer and a little bit easier for you to um, go through in your coaching. Um, just a couple of things to now start thinking about in the isolation phase. Um, this, is a, this was a video of a girl doing um, just some technical training um, on her own. Um, the whole idea here is she plays for Belgium under 15s and I start teaching them how to manipulate the ball. And what they do is they go away and they practice it. And we're seeing a lot of this now that we're in this COVID-19 phase where players are starting to have to do their home training. But this is something that we've had in Belgium, I put it in, I think three years ago, and all of the players are starting to really, um, I've got it here, we train the principles, we train the movement, we train manipulation, but we don't teach them skills. And the whole idea is, if we teach them movement, and we teach them how to manipulate the ball, and we teach them the principles of elimination, and the principles of passing, and the principles of receiving, then they have the ability to really start to um, improvise on those things a lot earlier than they might have done otherwise. 
How do you guys think about that? Is that something that you guys already doing? Is that something that is um, crazy to you? Um, let's start having a small conversation on that. I feel like some of these things I was doing as a kid myself, just on my own. So it's cool to see that it's like being put in place now and like coaches can implement that to kids. So I like it. So my question to you then is, if it's stuff that you were doing as a player yourself when you were younger, is that something that you've put into your own coaching programs? It wasn't something that I um, was aware of that I was doing. Like I was just doing it for my passion as for hockey as a kid. I'd have to be out there every day after school practicing just little techniques. Um, and so, yeah, I, I suppose from now on, like I can then put that forward in my coaching from now on. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. For me, for me, that's, that's huge because, um, we, what we're hearing all of this stuff. So the last two weeks that you've had your, um, games based, um, workshops, like I said, it fits heavily within my own philosophy. And as you'll see, as we go through the workshop, um, the games based, um, idea is heavily instilled in what I'm actually sharing with you. But I also believe that we, we haven't seen a single player go from picking up a stick for the first time to going to become a senior international at world-class level without having done some level of me and the ball manipulation and some technical training. Um, no player has gone all the way through only doing game-based training, which means in order to go in and deliver in these small-sided games, we actually need something that underpins that, which is our own technical skill and our own ability to manipulate the ball. Now, this is your opportunity, guys, just to start challenging me on that. Is that something that you genuinely believe? Is that something that you're, you're about to log off because you can't believe I'm saying we need to do technical training? How does it fit with you guys? I think technical training is essential. I think the game-based stuff is what you use to engage and to sort of drive that passion for kids to make it fun. And I think if they find the games fun, well, then they'll want to become more technical because they want to be better at the games. If that makes sense. I completely get what you're saying, yes. Um, so if I, if I pull this video up, um, one second. Uh, da -da. Let me share this video. Sorry, Maya, because everything crashed, I'm just trying to find any videos that I've got on uh, my desktop. So if I pull this video up, this is technical training, which is all about manipulating the ball. This is um, a senior Belgian international. And this is us going through how to manipulate the ball. So the idea is you touch the ball twice and then you don't touch the ball twice, but everything has to be on the beat. So if I stop that there, um, fun, not fun? Question to you, just throwing it out there. Looks like great fun. Yeah, it looks like great fun. Um, I had great fun doing it. Um, she, she really likes it. Um, all of the players that go through it really like it. Um, but it's hard. probably harder than it looks, sir. It's really hard. So if I play it again, um, my next question to you is, um, is she any good at it? <laughs> That's my next question to you. I'm going to share again one second. Yeah, I reckon it's she's not bad. <laughs> so bear in mind, it's two touches, two taps, and you're not allowed to hit the cone. Okay. Two touches, two taps, and she's not allowed to hit the cones. <laughs> I'm 
So she's okay, but my, my challenge to her, um, this is the first time we did this with her. Um, the big challenge she has, just like the vast majority of players that are out there, she has only ever done training where she has to just show how quick her hands, is, hands are, which means she doesn't really know how to manipulate the ball, truly. What she knows is how to dribble really quickly, knows how to do skills, but she doesn't really know, okay, if I touch the ball like this, with this much power, this is where I know it'll end up. I know that if I don't touch the ball twice, I'm still gonna be in control if I touch the ball like this. All of these little things are just because nobody's truly taught her how to manipulate the ball. So yes, she's a senior international. Yes, she did okay at it. But I really don't think, and hopefully you can see from that video, it didn't look too natural for her and it really wasn't comfortable. So what we're trying to do with these kind of sessions is in the isolation phase, we're really trying to look at um, how we can um, try to make it fun, try to make it engaging, um, try to let them create little things within it. Um, we play around with different rhythms and all kinds of stuff, but the whole idea is that she needs to be in control of that ball. Because if she's really in control of that ball, when we start putting her into other situations, she'll start to realize that she's a lot more aware of everything that's happening around her, and she's a lot more able to deliver exactly what she sees when there's a lot more pressure on. Um, so there's a question from Sharon around how long would you do this for in a session? I think it completely depends. Um, so if I, if I go back to what I was saying about the under 15s, um, we do this kind of session with them right at the beginning of the program. And then the players go away and they send me videos every week. So maybe every two days, a two minute video of them manipulating the ball, um, sometimes to music, sometimes without. Um, and let me see if I've got, if I show you this video. So this is another, this is another girl. She, she's playing for the under 15s. This session is all about her not looking at the ball when she's carrying. So again, this is something that the players go away and they do. And the whole idea is one, we build their, their proficiency, but it's also around the idea that they shouldn't be looking at the ball while they're carrying. Now, for me, this builds really into um, our whole philosophy of how we believe that the players should be playing or could be playing in order to go and win that gold medal in um, Paris and LA. But we just don't want the players staring at the ball. We want them being more aware of what's happening on the field. Now, we teach them that in isolation, even if we're, even if we're doing technical skills. So by the time we get into integration, the players um, are used to looking up. The players are used to manipulating the ball without staring at it, which means suddenly they don't feel the need to look up and look, stare back down at the ball. They have that ability to just carry the ball without looking at it and be aware of all of the things that they need to be aware of in those small-sided games. Does that make sense as a principle and as a concept? If you follow me, just put a yes in the um, chat box so I can see. So Graham, could you open up your could you open up your mic and just talk about the uh, comment that you put on the on the chat just really quickly? Um, yeah, just the idea of the timing. Um with uh, dragging alongside the beat of the music. Um, I just liked that concept because obviously a lot of people get um, frantic when they're in one-on-one -on -one situations um, and try to do the elimination skill too quickly or uh, things like that. So it can just help, is another way, I guess, of looking at the idea of teaching them to be patient and wait for the right time. Excellent. And um, the, the really cool thing about this is um, you can really start playing around with the beat. So um, on that, it was one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. But you can also start playing around with one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So you can really start feeling the music. And for the players that 
especially the youngsters who love listening to music in everything they do. Um, you almost can't get their headphones out of their ears. Um, integrating something that they're really passionate about and really familiar with means that actually they want to do more of it and they can start to relate to it. So if you can get the players starting to relate to a beat, um, which is something they're used to, then suddenly they get the transfer a lot easier and they start understanding about how they can manipulate the ball in different ways. Um, if I share another video, just again, really briefly, just so you can get an idea. This is now a team training session. So um, earlier we had the question, okay, that's great in, as an individual, but it's tough as a group. Well, this is me going through just a small basic session with the under 15 girls on, again, just simple ball carry. Now, hopefully what you see is that the players are not staring at the ball, they're starting to look up. And just like I said, it's something you can do in isolation where they're on their own with the ball. And it's also something that you can start to bring into um, a team activity as well. Okay, so if I, if I show you that, um, you start to see that um, we, we have the ability to take a bigger group, um, still teach them some technical skills, still put in some of those principles. Within that, I still get the chance to go around and start talking about, hey, listen, we need to get your eyes up. Um, how can we get your eyes up a little bit more? Uh, we talk about what they can do to allow them to get the ball in their peripheral vision so that they can still kind of see the glow of the ball as they're dribbling, but they can also see everything that's happening around them. And through that, we transfer it into a, a team training session and they instantly have to put it into practice where we keep correcting them and we keep talking to them about, hey, remember the session we just did over there? We need you to get your eyes up. We need you to get your eyes up, which means that constant, um, that constant um, bringing back the principle um, means that they're hearing it consistently and it's something that they keep reminding themselves of. And hopefully through that um, repetition, we'll start to uh, change behavior and get them a little bit further along the line where we want them. Um, the other part is I just really want them to fall in love with the ball. And I think that um, if we start doing this kind of training, um, hopefully you can start to see that technical training can also be fun. And it means that they will start to actually fall in love with the game. Um, if I just show you now, Darren, if you, Darren, if you um, added in a um, a pass into that kind of exercise, um, then that will also force them to keep looking up and be aware of where everyone else is around them. So you could have that whole group with two, three balls and 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 two touch passing and stuff like that. That will also be maybe um, a progression on that. Exactly. So uh, Andy, that's a huge point, um, and thank you for touching on that. That's why you're so incredible. Um, this, that's exactly, um, the, the evolution of what we're doing. So, um, I showed you just the ball manipulation stuff, which is just me and my ball. That's what I call it. Me and my ball. Um, once we go from that, then, um, and I believe that the players are comfortable with the ball, then we go to passing. Um, if I think back to the, the overall culture that I came from, which is, uh, England, um, we're very much as part of the Commonwealth, we're all about security, we're all about certainty, we're all about hard work and effort and um, all of that kind of stuff, which means you'll see kids uh, playing a game and this might be the first time they've ever, they've ever played and there are parents, players, uh, coaches, all on the sideline screaming, pass, 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 which means these kids are getting the ball and suddenly there's a wealth of um, pressure being thrown on them just to get rid of the ball. Now, if, if you've got that much pressure on you just to get rid of the ball, what happens is you start to fear having the ball. And it takes a really strong character to say, no, do you know what? I don't care if you're screaming at me, I'm going to take this elimination. So what we're trying to do in this is take away that fear. And we spend a long time just on them being able to ma manipulate the ball and feeling comfortable. We take out 
all of the screaming from the coaches and the parents around passing the ball because it's up to the player to make the decision about whether they pass or carry. And if the player chooses to carry at this age and they lose the ball, then that's part of their development. We don't care. Um, we genuinely believe that the players will have the ability to make a pass later on, um, but they need the ability to stay calm on the ball right now. Um, and yes, we, as I'm talking about right at the beginning of a program, it's all about the carry. Yes, as we go through an under 15 program, we also talk about the ability to pass and everything else. And just like Andy said, um, we integrate that back into the heart of what we're doing and the technical training so that they have the ability to practice the carry, but they also have the uh, ability to practice the pass. Um, 